All right, so welcome family. Uh, my name is Tyra Clark and I'll be your moderator for this evening. This is an inspiring and informative series. We're grateful for you all to be a part of. This uh, happens to be the last session of the series too. So if you hung in with us, uh, have if you've been hanging in with us since Tuesday, congrats. Um, the Black Businesses Rising, How to Do Business with the City series is an online eight part lecture series presented by the Black Leaders Collective, uh, which is centered around conversations that stem from the collective's economic and workforce development action item 1.2. The Black Leaders Collective's goal uh, through this initiative is to offset disparities, develop and train competitive Black-led small businesses, and intentionally rebuild equity. These conversations will strengthen a strategic roadmap um, that Black-led orgs can utilize to cut out the guesswork, get in the game, and do business with the, on the city, state, and federal levels. And thanks for, like I said, hanging in there, y'all. Um, today's topic, uh, ser uh, series topic, is how to report once you've won the bid. And it's being presented by the wonderful Samuel Hernandez, who's clutch, clutch, clutch. He came through on a pinch. <laughs> really. Um, so extremely appreciate Mr. Hernandez for his absolute time and, and expertise, of course. Um, Samuel has worked for the city of Austin for eight years. He's worked for the Capital Contracting Office, uh, PARD uh, Department, which is Parks and Recs Department. And now he works for the Purchasing Office uh, with the city. And um, he's going to, he has a presentation today that he will share with you all. I'll be in the chat answering any questions, of course, um, and making sure you all are um, up to date with what he's saying on the screen. You know, be throwing in links and things like that. And we'll be pinning him to the top here. So uh, yeah, and we'll leave questions to the end. I'm sorry, this is a small group though, so I don't know, but just keep your questions in the chat. I'll put them in a queue and then we'll, I'll, I'll ask them at the end. Um, all right, so without further ado, let me see if I can pin you. And, okay, there we go. And you, you are muted right now. Um, Mr. Hernandez, if you can hear me. Okay, there we go. Okay, great, great. <laughs> oh, thank you. I didn't know that was my cue. We should have. Uh, in the oh, sorry. Oh, uh, usually he's like, welcome, like, Mr. Sometimes. Hernandez. Uh, jazz hands or something. To <laughs> uh, good afternoon. Uh, bad to be here with y'all on a Friday at 5.35. Uh, hopefully he's had a wonderful, wonderful day today. I'm going to be sharing a good presentation that we just kind of developed. I know a lot of stuff is uh, going on, but if we get like, I know it's a small group, so we just get a round of introduction, uh, Miss Tyra, and then we can kind of start from there. Uh, the reason why I asked this is because I want to make sure that I curtail uh, my presentation to the audience. So I want to make sure, uh, you know, what, what, what they always say, know your audience. So I want to make sure that I present and target, you know, that audience on, you know, what is it, services, goods, uh, things in that and in, in that regard, and also the the commodity codes. So I'm gonna pass it back. Ooh. Yes, that's so good and um, very intuitive. Uh, so and you all can come off mic at least if you don't want to come off camera. But um, who do we have in the audience now, and what's your industry? Maybe what the what's the business you are doing or are trying to build? Oh, well, my name is Nika. I, I mean, the tech industry, but I was just curious to how it would be if you, someone wants to run a business, you know, like a side business. So my interest will be like a photography business. Thank you. Okay, great. So you, um, well, if you, I'm going to put the link in the chat of where you need to sign up at so we can capture your email to send you the playback because it there's a couple of sessions that would have been really ripe for you. Um, but this one's great too, because once you do get the your business um, established and you get directed well, um, this is the part of the game where you 
get these contracts from the city, state, or federal level, and you have to manage them. You have to you have to deliver on the contract. So when you get to that stage in your business, this is something. This is good to know. Uh, uh, so I, I'm glad you're staying proactive, even though I don't I don't know if you know you are. <laughs> um, and then we have uh, Mr. Michael Files Consulting. Nice. Um, any any specifics of what type of consulting or you just kind of want to leave it there? We can just leave it there. Thank okay. You, okay. Yeah. Um, excellent. I'm, I'm known to sailor. Pro, so. Yeah. Yeah. Just a transitioning sailor uh, with the United States Navy. Still kind of figuring out. So excellent. Thank you. Thank you, and thank you for your service. Uh, Mr. Samuel Hernandez has some military background too, so that's awesome. Go Navy. <laughs> Beat Army. Uh, and Mr. Dustin Sapp, uh, what we're doing right now is just kind of introducing ourselves to um, our presenter so he can get a, be more intuitive with uh, the way he presents. Okay, my apologies for the delay. I was wrapping up a meeting. Hello, everyone. I just wanted to just tap into this final series to just get some continue with the general information of doing business with the city mm -hmm. and um, the format that you guys have been working on um, throughout this series has been fine with me and I'll be sure to highlight any questions that I may have but I think we're good and we're ready to okay rock and, roll. and what industry are you in by the way so I'm in real estate I okay. am um, I may have missed some introduction, so please excuse me. So I could just share a little bit about myself. Um, so Dustin Sapp, I am in, this is my 10th year in the real estate industry. I'm with Compass Real Estate. I am also a graduate of UT Austin and also pursuing my MBA with UT in entrepreneurship and financial planning, a dual MBA. I also have some other ventures that I am seeking in terms of um, build community development opportunities and also collaborating with some other um, another group of people with group homes for veterans mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so I'm just here to just do just some of the legwork some of the footwork to make sure that all my ducks are in order before we hit the ground running I want to know steps a all the way through z to ensure the success of the organization the success of the business and it's all these steps right here that um attributes to the success of the overall goals. So that's why I'm here. That's right. Can I get an amen? <laughs> that's so good. <laughs> yes. Love it. And we uh, absolutely appreciate you all for being here and in the trenches. And I apologize if that might bring up any PTSD, <laughs> but uh, we appreciate you all. Uh, so yeah. Um, and as people kind of trickle in, I'll let them in and kind of uh, gently make, make sure that they um, introduce their industry name and email in the chat but um yeah we should we have a mix of industries here this evening thank you miss tara yeah. thank you uh, <clears throat> we're ready to rock and roll right and i'll see the alamo on the left and uh, excited and Richard to do the full uh, marathon in san antonio for the rock and roll marathon so uh, <clears throat> good good uh things happening in san antonio i'm going to share my screen real quick and then i'm going to turn off my camera but luckily, Ms. Tyra Clark is going to be managing the chat box. So if she has anything, uh, you have any questions, uh, make sure you put that on there. I want to make sure that I allow time at the very end to uh, answer all of your questions. We have a small group here, so you know, don't be uh, shy. Just put it in there and then uh, make sure that um, you speak out. And if there's um, things that you want to know specifically uh, by this time from the beginning uh, to now, you know, there's been a lot of presentation. I don't know if you met my uh, colleague, um, Rabe, she's more of the IT uh, component as well. And she does um, uh, being registered with the uh, city of Austin. So she does the vendor registration. So it's a big, big uh, thing for us. Uh, but for me, I'm gonna concentrate on the post award uh, part of the contract where you already got, you received a bid uh, and, a, or a contract, you know, it's kind of, sometimes it's per bid or proposal right at the very beginning. But once you ship the post award, it's a contract. So uh, my, presentation is going to be towards a uh, post award. So I'm going to stop my camera and then I'm going to share my screen and if you can let me know if you see my screen. Uh oh, that's me. Hold on. <laughs> Let's see. Okay. 
There we go. Okay, can you see my screen? I'm gonna put it on slide. I see the PowerPoint. Okay. Thank you for your feedback. Again, if you have any questions, uh, we have plenty of time, you know, correct? You know, we've got a small group, so uh, this is where we kind of <clears throat> kind of mesh together. So a uh, good opportunity to kind of just make sure that, you, you know. Okay, if I need it this lap. Thank you. Is that some feedback? Okay. Oh yeah, I, we, I'm muting folks as they come in. Sorry about that. So. Okay. Again, my name is Sam Hernandez. I work with the city of Austin. I've been working, like Ms. Kyra said, for eight years uh, at, the, at the capital contracting office. We did a lot of construction contracts and professional services. So there's different types of commodity codes that you have to kind of uh, register with the city of Austin if you want to do uh, construction or professional service. Uh, on this side from purchasing, uh, we deal with uh, goods and services. So anything uh, that the city of Austin needs to procure uh, for services, example, janitorial services, security services, um, and sometimes we, we have planning services. So anything dealing with services, uh, the city of Austin's purchasing offices procures uh, also goods, right? Currently, I'm working at the CTEC, uh, the Mercy Operations Center for the Travis County and City of Austin. They're on 51st Street. So we've been working the pandemic since last year, uh, March 2020. So, you know, PPE is kind of the things that we've been doing. Uh, also, uh, testing, vaccinations, alternate care sites. So we've been busy, busy, busy. So uh, happy to be here, you know, just to have, make sure that once you do get that contract, what do I have to do? So uh, it's my pleasure, my honor to get that information to you. So when you, whenever you do get that contract, you want to make sure that you're in compliant one, right? And make sure that we succeed together, you know, as a contractor and the city of Austin. Uh, it's a two-way street, and I'll be explaining that on the next couple of slides. I was mentioning earlier that the city of Austin is under the financial, uh, financial services department, uh, specifically for goods and services. So I'll kind of hit that a little bit pretty good earlier on the first slide. Uh, jump the gun, right? So really <clears throat> trying to just to make sure that I get that um, message to y'all, you know, services and goods. Uh, the reason being is because the city of Austin has uh, different departments. We have 46 departments uh, and the departments that do um, contracting are capital contracting office and purchasing. But we do also, you know, we have real estate who does lease agreements. So I want to make sure that the audience uh, recognizes that you know there are other departments in the city that that does contracting um, besides you know services and goods. Uh, we also have the economic development department where they do um, public private partnerships. So the big big projects uh, they do those projects. Uh, also, like I said, I worked at the Parks and Recreation Department. We also other do do other contracts there as well, like instructor uh, contracts for the gymnasiums where we have yoga contractors come in and they they perform lessons on city property but you know from the post award uh, to the end of the contract uh, everything is, is going to be simultaneous and you do have to kind of conform to that contract uh, they're all based on you know terms and conditions and then also the lastly is that communication that needs to play a big big role to make sure that uh, both parties are managing monitoring that contract and being uh, good stewards for us in the city um, with the public funds and then also on the contractor to make sure that we both are in line with the scope of work uh, of that contract. There are three learning objectives uh, that you're going to learn here in this uh, course in this lecture. Uh, first, you know, we're going to play role playing, right? You receive this contract. What do you do next? You know, I'm going to outline these steps that you have to kind of do to make sure that uh, you're in line with the city of Austin's uh, procedures and policies to make sure that that contract gets fulfilled uh, to, to uh, the terms and condition and that scope of work. Uh, to hey Samuel, I'm sorry to interrupt. We, um, we are still on the first slide uh, for some reason. It's not showing where I think the slide, I think, I believe you are on. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm on the excellent. Learning. Okay, that's great. Yes, yes, sir. That looks great. Learning objective. 
Yes, yeah, that's what- Was there any pertinent, oh, excuse me for interjecting. Was there any information that we needed on slide two at all? Because we I, we never did see that. No, that, that was just kind of the introduction on that one. And it was, okay, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, I was, just, I was talking about the purchasing office services and goods, so. And, and thank you for that feedback because I need it. And sometimes, you know, in a picture perfect world, uh, we would be uh, actually physically in a in a spot, um, you know, trying to do the lecture. So make sure that people get the message correctly. But I, I do need that feedback. Uh, we do teach uh, our class for the city of staff uh, in, in Icapri. So you'll be hearing me referencing Icapri and it's virtual. So uh, but that platform is Teams and we're currently kind of moved to um, LMS 365, but if you don't see the slide that I'm referring to, uh, if you could just let me know, Ms. Tyra, and I really, really appreciate it. So uh, main things is just to kind of get the objectives uh, through um, my presentation and you take that home with you so you can kind of make sure whatever that does happen, um, you can um, apply those principles to that contract. So contract compliance, you know, big, big thing for uh, my team, uh, specifically for the labor component. So you'll be learning a lot of things about uh, making sure that all your contract deliverables are remaining compliance, and you're going to be able to identify the importance of those deliverables specifically in that scope of work. So we want to make sure that everything that's outlined in it, the scope of work uh, is make sure that it's measured and then it's completed. So I'll be elaborating that in some couple of slides. So shift them to the next slide. So the next slide should be four. If you can let me know, if you don't see four, and I'll keep going. I'm gonna pause for a second. Looks good, I can see it. Okay. Yeah, and I think that's what I'm gonna do, just gonna make sure I pause to make sure that I have the right slide because I wanna make sure I articulate everything. Uh, correctly to um, to y'all, you know, this is great information. So I want to make sure that you get everything. Uh, what I put on here uh, was this just kind of the cradle to grave. The city of Austin does uh, cradle to grave procurement. Um, we want to make sure that um, that department gets that contract and make sure that they manage it to the fullest and then uh, completes it. So uh, the customer for us is the departments. I'll give you an example. ABIA. So ABIA comes and they want some security services um, in regards to the ABI airport. Uh, they'll do their planning. They'll do the, the whole scope of work, the projection, uh, terms and conditions, uh, the amount that the contract is going to be uh, is in, embedded uh, in, in the, the terms. But there's certain things that, that we have to do on the purchasing office to make sure that we carry through that solicitation uh, requirements. Uh, the, the department will put a requisition on the system. And when I say the system, uh, we have a system here uh, in the city of Austin, which is called Ames, just similar like any other government entity that kind of keeps track of all of the, the expenditures and the funds that the city has. Uh, we develop the solicitation with that department. Uh, we make sure that those criteria are met in regards to uh, the, the procurement type, uh, IFB, RFP, RFQS, examples of the procurement types. Uh, we want to make sure that we solicit that uh, service or goods, uh, depending on the commodity codes, and make sure that we have a fair competition uh, in regards to that RFP or IFB. We want to make sure that all the bids are turned in adequately and they're responsive and they're on time, right? So that's the main thing that we want to make sure that everybody meets that deadline. So if we find all the bids are responsive, uh, we'll move on to the next step. Uh, we're going to evaluate everything in regards to that solicitation uh, request. Uh, this part is called the sourcing. So if you see that slide, those three components make up the sourcing. Uh, the city of Austin's purchasing office has moved to a uh, sourcing category. Uh, so we have different sources that we have to kind of to procure uh, in regards to um, our procurement type. So that's just a kind of down to, you know, what we have to do. And I like to call it the, the whole enchilada is, is the middle part where we have to kind of make sure that we do all our work in the front end to make sure that everything is addressed. And, you know, that a bidder 
uh, knows everything that's going to have to happen uh, in regards to if they do get a contract. Uh, so there's a lot of responsibilities that has to happen for that vendor. That's why we kind of have to make sure that we go through everything and find them uh, responsive. Uh, usually it'll take six to nine months for the process for um, an RFP. Uh, that's the longest one because it entails a lot of information and a lot of meetings, uh, processes that, that have to take in place to make that happen. Uh, then uh, once it is approved by city council, it will come back to the purchasing office and we're able to execute that contract with the, the winning bidder uh, to make sure that we can go to that next step. Um, that's going to require a lot of documentation, and I'll be explaining that in the future slides. Uh, the contract administration person is the buyer. Uh, the buyer is the procurement specialist that handles the solicitation uh, sourcing request and then moves it on to the contract execution part of it uh, with that department and the successful uh, winner of that bid. And uh, that department is going to be able to manage that contract. ABIA's contract will have the contract manager. Uh, I'll explain that here in a little bit, uh, but they have to manage that contract along with the uh, successful bidder and the, the person who won the contract. And we have to monitor it for the different uh, requirements um, and reporting requirements for that contract in regards to the deliverables and terms and, condition, terms and conditions that have to happen uh, for that contract. I'm gonna pause and I'm move to the next slide. If y'all can let me know if y'all see the next slide. I can see it on my end. Okay, thank you. Yeah, once you receive that bid, um, the contract, you wanna have that contract kickoff meeting. Uh, for me, it's very, very important uh, to make sure that we have that meeting because that kind of sets the tone. So we have to have a common understanding of the contract, right? A lot of people, uh, once you get the contract, specifically if it's construction, right? It's like three books, you know, it's a lot of stuff that you have to go through, but uh, you want to be able to go through there and highlight all the most important things that you need to, to do in that contract, then you have to perform, right? So we want to make sure that we have that meeting to uh, discuss some of that stuff that has to happen, you know, in regards to that contract uh, has, to, has to be held either in person, right? We're in the pandemic or virtually, but this has to happen before any work is performed in the construction, notice to proceed, right? And also on the services, we wanna make sure that we document this uh, in writing. We have an agenda, sign in sheet, and we must record uh, the meetings. Uh, in addition to, you know, for us city folks, we wanna upload it into eCapri. I heard me state earlier that eCapri is the system on record for the city of Austin for the contract management. So this is very um, important for us to make sure that we find out who is that assigned key personnel of that contractor, you know, and now in the pandemic, you know, people are retiring, people are moving on to different um, work areas uh, and different locations. So if that person is not there through the whole duration of the contract, it's our job to make sure that we keep uh, the line of communications open and we wanna make sure that that contractor provides us that important, person who is managing that contract for the contractor side. And I'll be discussing that a little bit more uh, in a couple of slides moving forward. Uh, we also wanna address the compensation, right? You know, contractors, you know, we wanna get paid. So we wanna make sure what do we have to do to um, successfully, you know, complete all the deliverables and then submit my invoice and then get paid. So I'll be explaining uh, some of that stuff uh, here in the coming up slides as well. And then we also wanna review the terms, you know, some of the terms uh, and conditions uh, of the contract, usually it's three years with two initial, with two um, one-year extensions. That's policy standard, uh, but, you know, we want to make sure that that, contract, that contractor can fulfill that term. So we know that there's a labor shortage, you know, there's supply shortage. So we want to make sure that that contractor uh, has everything capable to move forward with the contract. Contract kickoff meeting, continue uh, verification. I'm good? Yes. All right, thank you. Uh, we wanna develop a communication plan. You know, once you 
do the kickoff, you know, are we going to meet weekly? Are we going to meet monthly? Uh, who's my Spock? We want to exchange business cards. Uh, we want to make sure that uh, we're in line and communicating. Um, we have weekly meetings on the construction sides, on the services sides, maybe monthly, or we're going to do a site visit. We need to have those discussions uh, at this meeting. Uh, anything else that we want to discuss, we, we review it. Uh, we want to make sure that we collaborate. Uh, once that notice to proceed is issued, uh, we should have everything in place, um, specifically all the requirements that need to be on site uh, before you commence work. Uh, we can discuss the scope of work. What is the city going to do? City will provide um, access to the, the uh, water treatment plant. Uh, the contractor shall have uh, background screenings completed before, before they step onto that water treatment plant to, to perform any services. If living wage requirements are required, I need to get that certification. Uh, the living wage program sits under my team uh, for the purchasing office. So we have multiples or a, a, lot of, a lot of contracts that we have to make sure that, that that worker on that contract is getting paid living wage. And that's one that I'm just passionate about. And I'll be discussing that later on. Also, the minorities, women, business enterprises, there's a big department with the city of Austin. That's all they do. So our job at the purchasing office is just to carry out the memorandum of understanding that we have with uh, SMBR to make sure if that contract has MW, MWB requirements, we want to make sure that we're collecting all the requirements from that contractor to make sure that they're in compliance. And I'll be discussing that as well later. Um, lastly, you know, it's safety, right? Safety comes first. Uh, we want to make sure that we keep everything safe uh, on the site. If you're coming on city property, a uh, big, big thing um, that's happening is, you know, we want to get the amount of uh, coverage of insurance uh, from that contractor and before it's executed. So we want to make sure that, you know, we check the insurance, make sure everything is good. Uh, or anything confidential, criminal backgrounds, as I stated earlier, we want to have all that completed. So whenever we go and badge them up, uh, they do have to go and, and uh, perform work on you know, WTP4. We want to make sure that all that is already cleared uh, before you access any of our city facilities. Same thing with our parks and recreation, uh, our recreation department, um, museums, and you know the list goes on. But if you're going on city property, all of this needs to be addressed uh, prior um, for the notice of proceedings issued. This one is a quote, hopefully if y'all can see it. Uh, to me, as a compliance person, you have to have that compliance plan in uh, effect uh, because if not, then you know we'll fail. So for us with the city, we wanna make sure that uh, it's a two-way street. So the contractor and us, we wanna make sure that we comply and we both want to succeed, right? We want to see that contractor, uh, small business, we want y'all to succeed, uh, but we have to have everything, all of our checks in place. This is from uh, Bruce Ben uh, Benhart or Behart, Billy Hart, sorry about that. Do y'all see my contract compliance requirements? Yes, sir, it looks great. All right. so. Let's y'all know compliance is my background. I was from worked at capital, capital contracting office uh, for the Davis Bacon prevailing wages. Uh, I've already assessed over two hundred uh, two hundred thousand dollars worth of back wages, uh, specifically because there's a lot of requirements that have to be compiled in this contract. Uh, so, and that's more of the construction side. But for the services side, is the living wage currently is that it's fifteen dollars uh, per per hour for the living wage requirements. Uh, you have to kind of make sure that you look at those requirements before you uh, place your bid. You know, there's an A15, A20 that, that the contractor has to submit uh, to make sure, you know, who's going to be working on this project um, whenever it does. If you do get the contract, you know, five, six, seven people, we want to make sure that we get all that information up front. So whenever that time comes, we just kind of verify everything. Uh, all these guys still working for you. Yes. OK, you're good. So we want to, we're going to discuss the living wage requirements, the MWBE, which is the SMBR requirements. We're going to discuss that on a couple of slides. 
insurance, you know, it's to me, it's big, you know, risk management. We want to make sure that we have those endorsements uh, put in that insurance um, specifically uh, once you um, start working with the city of Austin to eliminate all the risks. And that's just to protect you and to protect the city. So, and lastly is the invoicing requirement, right? All everybody, you know, wants to make sure that they you get paid accordingly to the terms and condition. I'll be discussing everything that has to take place to make sure that you get paid uh, pro appropriately and timely, right? So once you commit, finish all your work, uh, you wanna be able to submit your invoices uh, according to city standard. City of Austin living wage requirements. Hopefully everybody's seeing this in the slide. If I don't hear anything, I'm gonna keep going. Okay, this is a city of uh, Austin city council uh, resolution, and this is what they're pushing for. Uh, this is really big for city council. Uh, a lot of city council members push for this because it's a it's a labor requirement that we have to have in our city contracts. Uh, but there's certain points that it has to meet. Uh, the contract has to be predominantly for non-construction service, right? So as for service, usually this is in line with the commodity codes. So if you have a commodity codes. Uh, through the NIGP that you should be, once you register with the city of Austin, you need to list all your commodity codes that your business can perform. Uh, so that will kind of entail you which solicitations you'll receive. So if you, you know, Reve, uh, SNBR, they're great, great resources. So I would recommend to go with them to see, you know, what are my commodity codes and they can train you on that component of it. So for us, uh, for the compliance component of it, uh, we just want to make sure that if there's a labor component on there uh, and services being performed on city property or city vehicle, right? You know, we have a lot of vehicles. So if, you know, Jiffy Lube is washing these cars um, or, you know, doing the maintenance on them, um, we want to make sure that, uh, <clears throat> and the living wage requirements on there, we want to make sure that we do get the employee certifications from them. Also, it has to be solicited by 252. It's a local government code by the state of Texas. Y'all heard uh, Ms. Tyler state earlier, it's like city, uh, city, uh, state, and fed, right? So we do have a lot of federal contracts but for this for training purposes. We just have uh, city public funds, but we also follow uh, the Texas, Texas local, local government code 252 for the solicitation component of this uh, process to make sure that we have equal and a fair solicitation and competitive. So we wanna make sure that if that contract goes to 252, um, has work on city property, city vehicle. And then the last one is to make sure that um, we go through our city charter and that has to be approved by city council. So once city council approves it, and this is usually by RCA uh, re request for <coughs> council action, uh, they approve it, then it'll come back down to the purchasing office. At that time, anybody who is directly assigned to that contract, uh, mind you being prime or subcontractor or any tier, uh, if that contract is executed, then that person or that contractor is liable to provide all these requirements for the living wage provisions of that contract. Small and minority business participants. I was saying earlier, you know, SMBR is big, big, big department uh, with the city of Austin. I'm not trying to steal their thunder or anything. Uh, the only thing that what my team does is we have an MOU that we have to kind of apply by with the SMBR. And this is signed by their director and our director, but we have to make sure that we monitor all the contracts that we have for the city of Austin that have these goals assigned to them. You know, our buyer will submit uh, the package, so let's take the package to SMBR and SMBR will sign the goals according to the commodities and they'll list a compliance plan and they'll make sure that we make a good faith effort on everything that has to have with that, with that scope of work to make sure that we have uh, everything assigned and uh, we have monthly expenditure reports. They're called sub Ks. Uh, the person who receives the contract must submit, must submit these to uh, SMBR and the contract manager uh, so we can make sure that everything is in line 
uh, with the requirements for uh, MWBE. And then also the living wage contractor certification. The reason it's tied into the SMBR requirements is because it's the labor that kind of comes from the prime to the sub. So we don't, we just don't collect living wage certifications from that prime. We also want to collect it from the sub, that sub, 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 whoever's work doing work, uh, performing work on city property. We need to get that certification. And this is uh, once you get the contract, it's um, minimally annually. So, and, you know, I was stating earlier, you know, workers come and they go. So if somebody comes, uh, you have a new employee, we need to get this uh, as soon as possible. And then lastly is that compliance plan. This compliance plan will stay in, intact uh, from the beginning once it's solicited um, and then, you know, executed all the way to the end. And then SMBR has to close that component of, of that part in the contract as well. Minimum insurance requirements for contractors. I was in a meeting earlier with my employee, um, and also I'm going to talk about insurance requirements uh, this afternoon at our training at 5:30. She said, "Well, make sure that you tell them about the endorsements. That the endorsements must uh, name the city of Austin in the as additional insured and the waivers, and we need the notice of cancellations indicated." I'm not going to go too deep into this. We have a risk management department for the city of Austin. Uh, they do the training. For the city staff, I'm not for sure for the, the vendors, but we are going to inquire on that. But the main bullet points for this one is the three objectives for uh, the insurance general liability. Excuse me. Excuse me, Sam. Just, Matt, yes, I'd sir. just like to interject just for a second. So, that department, would you, or if Tyra is available, would be able to upload the contact information that we could reach yes, out if we needed, you know, some additional information, please? Yes, sir. So the three components, this is, and this is the basic three for insurance requirements. And to me, um, I'm passionate about insurance because I know it's we're eliminating risk. So we want to make sure that we work hand in hand with that contractor. Uh, specifically now we're in COVID, right? So some, some of the levels have increased in regards to the uh, limitations of the, the that dollar amount. But for us, it's uh, general liability, auto liability, workers comp, and an employer's liability. To me, for the workers comp, uh, goes hand in hand with our living wage. So we want to make sure if a person's on site um, working, uh, we want to make sure that we're covered, not just for the city of Austin, but also for uh, the contractor and then that employee. Invoicing requirements. Once you receive your executed contract and your standard terms and conditions, you're going to have everything kind of outlined there. Uh, we do have a standard terms and condition that we have for every contract. Uh, so this has to be vetted by city legal and they approve everything. Some of the things that you have to do before you get paid, right? You have to submit separate invoices for each order after delivery, right? So if you're uh, <clears throat> asked to deliver something a good, we want to make sure you submit that invoice separately. They also have to be sent to that address that you have in the contract. But now with the pandemic, we're emailing those uh, invoices. So it's easier to email and that email will be on the contract as well. But we have to have certain things on that invoice specifically for the purchase or delivery order. It has to have that unique invoice number uh, developed. Uh, we also have to have the PO number before you even perform any work. Um, as I was stating earlier before the notice to proceed, you have to have a PO, a DO, a CT. A lot of people are like, what is a CT? It's a central uh, taking over from the city of, city of Austin's purchasing office. So it's just kind of the city has a lot of acronyms. So we want to just kind of make sure that we have these systems in place uh, to make sure that, you know, once that work is performed or before that work is performed, you should have something indicating saying, yes, the city authorized me to perform this work. And we know here as colleagues, contractors, uh, city folks that, you know, if you don't, if you do something and you don't have authorization, then that kind of puts you in a risk. So we want to have that department's contact name information, that guy's working at ABI, who is that contract manager that's, you know, telling me to uh, provide him with 10 security guards. 
uh, for 24 hours, seven days a week. You want to have that information on there because he's going to be held uh, liable uh, for, you know, making sure that you get that deal to perform that work. And, you know, ultimately he's going to check all the invoices. Uh, they should be itemized according to your price structure in the contract. You may you put a proposal and write a bid. You already had set the price. You're telling the, the city that, hey, this is what, what I'm going to, according to all my <clears throat> proposal and my bid, this is the price that I can do for you. And then, you know, for us to have an, a contract in place, that's that's the main reason to have that. Um, so <clears throat> we can itemize it and then we can pay it to y'all. Also, uh, invoices that have labor, right? We want to make sure that all that is intact. Um, with the tabulation of the work hours and that's all on the bed sheet. So that'll put your rates on that invoice according to the successful uh, bid sheet. Uh, also the last couple bullets, uh, we wanna make sure that, um, of course you have to be authorized, right? But we wanna make sure that the contractor uh, passes all the, the costs to that subcontractor as well. Not that there's an exemption, then that's something that you have to talk with uh, the contract manager and the purchase novice, but you know that should follow through with uh, the subcontracting as well. Lastly, it's those taxes, right? Uh, we have to remove the taxes from the Fed, the state, and the city. Sometimes we get invoices and has all those taxes. We have to send it back. You say, can you please remove that the taxes because we're exempt? So those are the the big ones uh, to make sure that that you get paid. Uh, in regards to you know invoices. I'm gonna stop there for a second just to see if anybody, I'm gonna take some questions uh, in regards to the invoices or living wage in WBE. Do I have any in the chat? Um, so far, nothing in the chat. Let me double check. Um, but if you, yeah, if you all wanted to come off mic and even off camera, uh, and you had it, and you had a question, let's do it. I don't have any questions right now. A lot of good information, Sam. Much appreciated. But there is a Q and A uh, section in the um, at the City of Austin's website for finance. No, I. I Q and A here at the end of this presentation, but I was just trying to ask if any had any specific questions in regards to uh, this presentation. But uh, as far as like the finance, uh, that's kind of broad. Can you kind of be uh, like more specific or? It's okay, oh, okay. So my apologies. So I see again, no questions so far. I get great information, but I see where Tyra posted the Austin Finance Online, where we can go to get you know just additional information, just a great resource. And thank you for posting that. But is there also a section in there just for some random Q&A that also highlights some additional information like for what you're sharing and could elaborate a little bit more on it in the future when it is time to submit? Yes, everything. Once you um, go to that Austin Finance Online, it, it tells you all the instructions. So if you're looking for this um, bid or proposal that's on there and they'll have the, everything to a T. So and it, and it kind of walks you through that whole bid package. And it tells you okay. the authorized point of contact. So say, if I, I'm going to go and I'm going to make a bid on this uh, solicitation. Uh, we, are, we have an authorized point of contract, which he can ask. You can, he answers all the questions and, and answers. And he's authorized, uh, he's authorized to talk to, you know, he's the only person who can talk to that, the contractor who's making the bid. And he'll have to, by law, has to put out an addendum to make sure that all the questions that y'all asked uh, goes back out to everybody who's um, making um, a bid for that. So that's a great question. Understood. Okay. Now, one of the main things that my boss wanted me to hammer home was uh, deliverables. Uh, the main things why deliverables are so important is because we want to make sure that everything is captured. Uh, we want to make sure that they're smart, right? You heard about smart scope of work. We want a smart deliverable. Uh, specific, measurable, agreed upon, realistic, right? We want to make sure that we can actually do this and time bound. You know, I want you to come and pick up my doormats uh, twice a week, replace it with a new one um, every other week. So we want to make sure that we put everything on there. Uh, my examples for the deliverables here, uh, Spock, I think I mentioned earlier, 
that contract kickoff meeting is very, very important. Um, I was at CCO, we did prevailing wage, we had a lot of federal contracts, so, and we would get audit. The first thing that that auditor would come and ask for is that sign-in sheet for that contract kickoff meeting. So uh, they're like, well, that person's still here, he's not here. So we wanna make sure that we hammer that home, you know, provide me the, the single point of contact for that contract. I need it within one week and I need it, you to be 100% compliance. I referenced it on the scope of work 2.6. So those are the, some of the specifics that, you know, hey, well, you're, you know what I'm asking for and you know what I want it and I need you to be 100% compliant. So uh, that's the most important thing for uh, this deliverable. How are they measured? Are y'all seeing my, uh, my screen still? Yes, yeah, yeah it looks good. Fine. Okay, thank you. And that's, that's, that's good, just being interactive to make sure you know that I'm hammering at home. So uh, we wanna make sure that they're uh, being measured correctly. Uh, when I was at PAR, we had a, uh, the, the contractor had to submit uh, monthly reports. I managed all the concessions on Town Lake, Butler Pitch and Putt, uh, the rowing club, um, Texas Rowing Club, uh, the Rowing Row Austin Rowing Club. Um, then th there's some of them that we had to kind of do, make sure that we kind of managed all their uh, inventory. But they had to submit uh, monthly reports. Uh, also, we had to make sure that we reported to the Contracts Concessions uh, Parks Board. So we want to make sure that we get all those reports monthly, and they were tied to revenue. So we want to make sure that we keep. Uh, the dollar amount there measure, you know, what, how do we do last year? How do we do this year? I know we've been impacted with the pandemic that kind of hurt a lot of people, you know, people are still hurting. So we want to make sure that if that does happen, we need to keep a record of that. Uh, what are our milestones, you know, for the contract? Uh, some contracts are, you know, planning contracts that have different phases. So we want to make sure that uh, phase one, phase two, and phase three are captured in this deliverable. And usually there's dollars tied to phase one for the planning, um, phase two. Uh, the deliverable that I put down for the deliverables and payment schedules was to uh, have that community confidence and communication trip. You know, it's two days and it's the first week of December. Uh, we wanna make sure that we complete it by December 31st. Uh, you know, back then was 2019. Uh, what is required? You know, we want a summary, a report of a community feedback. What did we get out of this? You know, we want to make sure we document everything that we got from the community because that's basically what we're here for, right? We want to make sure that the community uh, gets what they're asking for because public funds are involved. Any notes that we can get, uh, did they give presentations? Um, I know at part we just always go out there, uh, do presentations to, to the community to see, you know, what, what does the, the community want? You know, we wanna make sure that we capture all that and then bring it up and then go through our contract sessions, part board, environmental board, and then ultimate to, you know, the, the city council, city manager. So we wanna make sure that all that is transparent. Um, and then lastly, you know, what did we pay for this uh, deliverable? You know, how much is left for the contract? Uh, we paid 15% of it. so. Uh, we want to make sure that we capture that for uh, that contract and you know just to make sure that that contractor gets paid for that deliverable on time so and i'll be discussing that here in a minute as well deliverables in general uh, whenever you get awarded a contract uh, you're going to have a section on there that's going to identify that contract manager not just for the city but for the contractor as well we do a big project that might be a project manager. And then we'll have our person, our procurement specialist, who's the contract administrator. And he's the only one, he or she is the only one that can make changes to that contract example. You know, if they need an, uh, <clears throat> an extension to that contract, then our procurement specialist will be doing that as well. Uh, also, just to, just to reiterate that the city and the contractor uh, re re resolve to keep the same key personnel assigned to the engagement throughout the ter its term. So we'll, at the beginning, we're gonna make sure that, you know, is that person gonna be here throughout the term? 
yes or no. And that's the, that's the point that we have to make sure that we hammer home that, you know, that we need to kind of make sure that we want to succeed together. And we know that's a two-way street, right? It's not just the city, it's the, it's the contractor because we want y'all to succeed because, you know, we need y'all and we want to make sure that we're successful together. What completes a deliverable? Uh, there's a couple components that complete a deliverable, uh, receipt, uh, invoices, and then the payment, right? So we have a three-way match. Uh, first thing, you know, those packing slips, bill of lading reports, intangible work products, um, ordered a lot of uh, things like $107,000 worth of hand sanitizer. So we wanna make sure that, that hand sanitizer gets here and gets delivered at the Tra Travis Ex Expo Center. We need those uh, bills of lading, the packing slips, everything that we can to make sure that that person at the Travis Expo inventory is right. And they have to make sure everything is received. If something's damaged, then we're not gonna take it. We're gonna have to send it back and then at that time, we have to start working with the contractor uh, vendor to make sure that everything is completed accurately. Um, the invoices should be itemized and should be quantities, you know, all the specs we need. If it's a good, we need the specifications to be on there. What, what did you ship, you know, 12 ounce, 16 ounce, you know, depending on what, what good you're acquiring from that vendor. Uh, also, you know, everybody wants to make sure they get paid in time. So, we want to make sure that uh, that this is accurate and uh, pay everything according to the contract. Another thing that uh, our deputy person officer want to make sure that I get to y'all, uh, we want to make sure that if, if that scope of work changes in the contract, we need that change order or amendment, something that you know is authorizing um, that additional scope to be performed, you know, that deliverable. I'll give you an example. Uh, at the convention center, we had a, a contractor doing sidewalks, you know, brand new sidewalks, uh, and all of a sudden uh, go out there to do interviews, wage interviews. Uh, they're working on a kiosk. And then we go back, you know, that was scope creep. You know, they never got authorized to put up a kiosk uh, there at the convention center. So we want to make sure that y'all know if it's not in the scope of work and you're performing that work, you shouldn't be performing that work. We need a change order or we need an amendment stating that, yeah, you're authorized to do this work on this contract. So when all the deliverables are completed and then the payments are made, then at that time we can review and we can close out that contract. You know, usually a punch list at the very end and we wanna make sure that uh, everybody gets paid, uh, the city is satisfied. You know, of course there'll still be, uh, some contracts will have warranties and things of that nature and also uh, the contract has a record retainage of three years after it's closed out. So we want to make sure that that uh, is put out to the contractor. So if we get like a wage complaint, you know, a year after that the contract closed, we can still go back in there and uh, assess back wages. So that's why it's very, very important this happens. A little bit what we we're talking about earlier. You know, there's a couple categories uh, in regards to the deliverable, right? That's why it's like conforming or non-conforming. Uh, that city contract manager, he's the one that's supposed to be reviewing everything when that uh, invoice comes. And then once he authorizes it, then yeah, he'll submit it to accounts payable, uh, authorizing the payment. But, you know, say if, if I get that hand sanitizer and it's damaged, you know, I don't have to accept that I can refuse it and then send it back and then, you know, have the contractor provide, you know, the correct stuff, you know, this is what we ordered, this is what we, this was what we, this is what we should receive, but the city uh, under no obligation is, uh, has, has to accept or non-conform deliverable uh, for, you know, that, that good or that service. So um, we want to make sure that we do everything to protect the city and the citizens, citizens, because as I mentioned earlier, it's public funds and we wanna make sure that we're good stored. So earlier I was stating, you know, it's a two-way street. I want y'all to succeed. The city also um, wants you to succeed, uh, but we know it's a two-way street and we wanna all succeed together. Uh, the reason uh, or how we can, uh, to, how can we meet that expectation is that communication, you know, conforming uh, together, you know, performing. So we want to make sure that everything is done in accordance with 
uh, that scope of work, uh, that deliverable, you know, and also make sure that all the requirements on the city ordinances and resolutions are carried through in that contract, uh, specifically living wage, prevailing wage, the MW requirements. And then lastly, um, you know, the insurance, make sure that that stays in place throughout the contract. Um, of course, you know, it's only, they only do one year insurances, but we wanna make sure that we keep that uh, up to date. Summary, 627, we got three minutes. For me as a Toastmaster, we wanna make sure that we stay on time. You know, it's been a good, good week. Uh, I know for us at the purchasing office, uh, we're still uh, attached to, or for my team, um, all components of my team, we're still working at the uh, emergency operations center. So it's was really good to kind of, you know, get back to, you know, Ms. Tyra. Uh, but like I said, if y'all have questions, we want to make sure that we get that information to you. Uh, contract management is big, you know, a lot of contractors, um, you know, once they get the contract, you know, say, I didn't know how to do all this. I know how to put, uh, provide, you know, if you have labor on there, you need to provide uh, certified payrolls. Um, if it's prevailing wage, um, Davis-Bacon. So those are things that that contractor needs to be aware of uh, before he starts engaging uh, with do, to do business with the city of Austin. There's different stages in the contract management component, right? Mine is more the postal war, right? I know the, the beginning, uh, the middle and the end, but it's all important. Uh, the main thing for us, uh, compliance is to make sure that, you know, y'all succeed uh, and, and then the city succeeds. So we wanna make sure that we uh, build a partnership. And I was saying earlier, it's a two way street, you know, at any time we wanna make sure that, you know, it's, it's not just us, it's, you know, it's all of us and we're in this together. So we wanna make sure that we don't find fault to anybody, you know, we're in this together. We wanna make sure we identify those problems and right, there's a solution. The solution is to, you know, fix it, get it right, uh, get everybody paid and then just kind of you know move on to the next project. So just uh, keep things in that nature. We wanna make sure that we keep in line with that uh, and uh, be, be good stewards and work with that contract. And we're all here for the community. So we need to kind of act on that. And you know, specifically during, during these times and just build together uh, you know, <clears throat> towards uh, the new normal, what that new normal is, we don't know yet, but we wanna make sure that uh, we continue these outreaches, you know, get to that end user and educate them to succeed. You know, if you, there's different opportunities, uh, specifically here in Austin, you know, we're, we're growing, uh, seems like daily, right? hundred people coming in a day. Uh, houses are, are, our house prices are increasing. Uh, so we want to make sure that everybody gets a fair opportunity uh, for, you know, contracts. Uh, lastly, questions. Um, I put my email on here and also um, I, will, I can send this presentation to Ms. Tyra um, and then my phone number. If you have any questions, you know, feel free to give me a call. Uh, specifically now, the best method is just to email. Like I said, I'm OCD, so I'll check my email like, you know, constantly. constantly. Um, if you have anything that you want to, you know, have questions on in regards to uh, purchasing, you know, I can get you to the right person. Uh, oh, and it's a SMBR. And then also lastly, you know, there's uh, construction CCO. So I can tell you, you know, who to contact and who you don't have to contact. But like I said, it was my honor, my pleasure uh, to, you know, do this presentation to y'all, you know, on a Friday evening, Halloween weekend. Uh, a lot of stuff is going on. So thank y'all. Uh, back to you, Kyra. Tyra. Awesome. Oh, you've been amazing. And, you know, as always, champ. <laughs> Uh, thanks for hanging in, the, hanging in there. I had a question myself, just to, and I won't keep y'all, but uh, so are we basically saying technical assistance um, doesn't, let me unpin you here. Okay. It's, uh, there is no technical assistance maybe for this part of the process. It's just about emailing um, maybe you all to, to continue to build the understanding of what this means, um, or going to whatever training that may be available to even to vendors eventually. Is that kind of like wait for training if it comes up for technical assistance, or just kind of uh, reach out to you all? Um, and I'm trying to make it. Let's see, 
is that the is that kind of the the going rate here if, if folks like uh, Dustin was saying earlier more questions on just the getting into the thick of this information um the best way to do that now would be to I, I would imagine reach out to you all or um just kind of hang tight for training that might trickle down on the city's website it's not like the you know procurement uh, we had PTAC earlier with Curtis the, uh, down in San Antonio and they have those technical assistance um, programs but maybe not on the city level yeah I know for us in the purchasing department we do a big big outreach um, I'm thinking in March uh, Ms. Yolanda Miller she's the you know, she's our deputy purchasing officer and they provide a lot of different things um, on a monthly monthly basis. Uh, the person office doesn't. I know SMBR does uh, capital contracting, but all that that can be found on the city's uh, websites. You know, just you know, small minority businesses, and they do um, a lot of certifications. How do I get certified? Um, and really great great resources out there. But if there's any like specifics, you know, as far as you know, <coughs> granular. Um, I'm, there's, you'd have to kind of go to, you know, just uh, <clears throat> request that information. Mm -hmm. Okay. Or that training. Okay. Yeah, makes sense. And i um, glad we, we cleared that up. Uh, once again, thank you very much, you all, for showing up. Appreciate your family. It's kind of what I like to call you all. Um, and yes, you can receive a copy. I've been just to manage my bandwidth. <laughs> I've been trying to hold off um at least the hard copy none of the recordings are going to come out till later um but the hard hard copies as well uh but since this is such a small group um i could after we get off you know i could send that uh to you all um oh, greatly appreciate you that. thank you yeah yes yeah, yes yeah. uh just um you know, of course uh, make sure you have your email in the chat and then uh but at the end of the day when it's all said and done there will be a playback of the entire series with valuable steps, these recordings, and any um, additional information like car copy presentations, and a guide we'll be sending out. If you did not sign up for the Eventbrite series, let me just make sure I put this uh, link in the chat. Please do that because that's how we are going to be able to blast you with the playback. Um, you just you have to be on our list here. So here's a series link. Uh, let's see. And um, let's make sure we have you on that. And I'm uh, remember to, there's three dots in your chat box. Uh, those three dots, if you click them and scroll up, it will say save chats. So just make sure all save chat as well. So you can reference any links that were shared in the ch chat or, or information. Um, yes, and Dustin, we'll try to get that risk management, uh, that contact information to you. If not today, because I, you know, I have to wait to get that contact information by the end of the week or beginning of next week. So just be on the lookout for I that. I really appreciate that. Thank you. Yes, yes, yes. And it's not, and you're all of you all are you know betting on yourselves, getting down to business. So uh, we're here here to be a conduit. Uh, have a great evening and holiday weekend. Um, and continue to look out for more resources from us in the future. And thank you so much for being a part of the series. We're, we're going to take a picture at the end, but it's such a <laughs> it's such a small group. We're, we might just let y'all live. We, we won't do all that. But um, I hope to see y'all soon. And and I got my costume Friday. on anyway. You don't want to see me in my costume. No, I'm only kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, I mean, that's a good one. I mean, that's a good one. Thank um, you. That's great. Yes. Uh, well, blessings. Have a good one and uh, see y'all in the, the virtual sphere. Again, peace, y'all. Right. You all stay safe and, and be thanks, well. And thanks, Samuel. Later. <laughs> Bye, fam. Okay, bye-bye.